here's another late development, and this news keeps coming in as we're talking here. You want to do your dividend stuff at the end or now? Yeah. Oh, we can go into it now. Uh, okay. uh, okay. Up the Robin Hood screen and uh, talk about just like some misconception, two misconceptions that even I had as early as like four months ago. And you can use them. Um, Microsoft has a decent di uh, has a dividend, so I have Microsoft pulled up. And just go to their stats page, and we'll go from there. Let me pull that up real quick. You said Robinhood not to get married trade. Uh, any any page that has a stats page with the dividends on it. Okay, perfect. Let me pull up Robinhood first. Y'all see it? Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Perfect. Uh, where would that be? Over here. Uh. Scroll down, yeah, right. There, if, if it has highlighted dividend yield, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Yeah, we'll start from there then because I'm not looking at the screen, that would probably be helpful. All right, so uh, one uh big component something uh, there's a lot of like big swings and a lot of people that come to trade for different reasons. But when I first like started picking up on trading, I picked up on trading on dividend trading. And one of the things that I really enjoyed about dividend trading is, is bulletproof. I, it, I didn't understand what a dividend was. So for all you guys that don't know, uh, elementary, dividends is what a company pays you just for holding their stock for X amount of time. And a lot of people think like, oh, why would this be a thing? Why would they do it like this? Well, this is like how they keep people vested. There's a such thing as old money versus new money. And your old money keeps the bank afloat. There's some people that hold on to stocks for years and this amount of time of holding on to the stock can benefit the company because it's always a reassurance that this money's there. But how do you guarantee that those people stay there? Well, you pay them interest. This is like this is why I this is why I kind of diverted my money from a savings account to the stock market, because there are certain stocks such as um, my, one of the very first stock I ever got, which was uh, Lowe's. Microsoft, Home Depot, all these places that have dividend stocks. And it started reoccurring. And I then wanted to know like, okay, wait a minute. There has to be a, 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 some type of advantage you can gain from just being able to hold on to these stocks for X amount of time. And how much of your money do you have to have invested in this stock to have maximized the amount of dividends you can get? And I think one of the big misconceptions that I had if we're looking at Microsoft right now, is their dividend yield, which is very important. Yield in, implying for a year is 0.98. So what you would be able to make over a year is however much the stock price is currently divided by that yield. So it's 212 divided by 0.98. Uh, somebody good with math? Oh, wait, I have an iPhone. Never mind. I forgot, you know, remember all the times your teachers told you you won't have a calculator on you? Lies. Uh, so you would need to invest $216 total into, into Microsoft. You can go back to uh, uh, the page to actually get that 98 cents in its grandiose time. So this is a snapshot. This number will change tomorrow. Tomorrow, their stock price could go to $400. And that would be an increase of how much you have to invest that year to make a grand total of that 98 cents. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't sound like a lot. But if you own $4,000 in um, in Microsoft, well, now you're talking. But if you want to make at least the what is intended for you, what Microsoft intends to give you annually, that's 90 cents. So as great as a stock as Microsoft is, it's not a great dividend stock. I would trash this in a heartbeat. I wouldn't have this on my things to do and things to focus list. And it's because of how much I'll yield over a year. 
So then, okay, what would be a good stock? Let's go to AMC. A good dividend yield stock. Everyone knows AMC is trash right now. It's gutter wow, trash. I was, I was thinking about um, investing in AMC. And yes. and I made a call out on it three weeks ago when it was $2.40. And it jumped in that week that I made the call out because I knew that the movie schedule was cycling. Yeah, uh, there he is. I bought it at $2.19, 100 shares. And then I sold it at four four sixty, I believe. But if we go down here and we look at AMC real quick, we see that AMC's dividend yield, they are desperate. This is a shitty stock. I would never tell anyone to buy this without having some plan. But if you know, if you know you're gonna go to the movie theaters uh, again in your lifetime or again within your child's lifetime, then AM, then AMC isn't a bad deal for you. And it's not a bad deal for you if you got in at $2.98 and don't mind holding it because their dividend yield is $16. So three divided by three divided by uh sixteen dollars you're they're literally paying you just to hold the stock hey please don't throw away our stock because we will pay you yeah so you have to invest way less so if you times this by a hundred you'll basically be making nineteen dollars if you hold this one stock three dollars and ninety five cents over the year in dividends you will be paid twenty dollars basically just to hold it this is way more lucrative of a incentive. So your ideal goal would be to bulk up on a stock like this right before di- right before dividend lock-in day, secure the dividends, and this is where these spikes come up from. That spike is a dividend yield day. Everyone knew that they, that was the day to lock in this price so that you could make this money. That was and, the 20th or the 24th. I believe it was the it was the day before. So that way you that way, like even if you did it on paper chart, you get everything. So once again, this is just a crash course and I'll have a little bit more things. But if you wanted to get into dividends, this is why you do it, because you will can be I, this is how I make my money. My market, my I don't have I don't have the market size of someone like Taufik that has a bunch of investing power in that. But I don't also game aim to play like that i'm switching over onto different sides i have different accounts for different things but i originally started my account to focus strictly on dividend you and from that wow. i've now made two separate accounts off of 15 dollars 34 that's all i had in the first account now i've made that account into 2000 twice so i have one account that has a thousand dollars that i took from there and took the td ameritrade where i do all option trades and now here in robin hood i have a thousand seven hundred i believe that I, so on that yield off of fifteen dollars thirty four cents every every three months every two months and now I have a cycle of every month I'm being paid at least four dollars by somebody to hold on to their stocks and wow. now this is like somebody's like now someone's like okay this is where I got into the algorithm so I said wait a minute every company tells you when the lock in day is every company will always and every chart will tell you when the lock in day dropout is. Now, dividend dropout day is a, I think it's an illusion um, for a company like AMC. Once again, if you got in at $2.98 and it went up to $4 and then it dropped down to $2.98 again, for you to sell that stock is kind of meaningless. The money the money will return. The wave is always there. If you believe that you're some, you yourself will personally go to the movie theaters, dumbasses are there right now. So use that to your advantage. Don't fall, tra- don't fall like trapped to that. Don't sell a stock on the dividend lockout day because it's gonna drop, and it's gonna drop. But it's already been accounted for. Investors have already accounted for it. There's nothing too dramatic. And if anything, that is when you put in your option call. That is literally the call. And this is why dividends are so important. I think people don't really use them to the best of their ability when it comes to algorithms. Because once the dividend drop in day comes and it's the dividend dropout day, it's gonna drop by two or $3. If you only need two to three do- two, $3 for a, a boost on a call, that's it because you have been literally following this price for whatever amount of days. But this is what you're gonna need. An Excel spreadsheet or expre- a spreadsheet of any type, a date that a day of the, the day of their dividend payout, which is gonna be given out on every company's 
uh, financial disclosure page. You can just go to their user setting page. Microsoft has one. Every company that's on the in the stock market or is I, that is IPO is verified. So they have to disclose that information. And it usually comes right before or right after their um, earnings call. So this is disclosed on their page. This is the this is the nitty gritty of it. You have to go find this information. But there mm. are a bunch of useful websites that already do it for you. The only downside is some of them make you pay for it. I'm a very cheap motherfucker. So that is the that is my thing. But um, so before we go into the strategy itself, so with the dividends, mm -hmm. there's, you said there was two days to know the lock in day and the dropout day. What yes. Else? Because there's another day that I heard is the ex dividend day. Which one is that? And the the ex dividends day. I'm not sure what you mean. Because uh, let me see if I on whenever I look at it on Thinkorswim, uh -huh. like when I see a stock, it shows like when you go into <laughs> over, stock overview, it shows and it shows you the dividend yield. Let me see if I can pull it up here. I, I don't know where it is on the software, but it shows up on in the app. So oh no no um, yeah AI or no. So basically in the top, you can see, um, so you see div, you see a div number. I don't know if y'all can see this. So it's like, you see uh, div over there, this company, yeah. so that one doesn't really matter. Then you see a dividend frequency. So is that quarterly, monthly? Yeah. Quarterly, that makes sense. Then you see an yeah. ex dividend date. Is that the date that you have to have the stock yeah, that's the date that you have to hold the stock for. And this is and this is very important, especially like if you're very comfortable with if you have a fluid amount of money. If you holding because the stock price think because everyone's thinking like you. Any everyone who's looking at this as a dividends play is thinking like you. My dividend lock in day is always a week before because I don't want to buy the stock at its most expensive. And the day before dividend lock in day is going to be its most expensive. Uh like and then, and that's where you run the risk of like, oh no, okay, now I've already paid. And then when the dividend dropout day comes, you've now lost your dividends in a sense of it because you would have to wait to the next dividend play or a major play happens before you can even pull your dividends out. Another thing that the uh, a lot of these brokerages try and get you guys to do is do a drip, a cycle drip, where the money goes directly back into that certain stock. Don't do that because that stock is that's basically you paying the investors back because the intention is to give the money back at the highest rate. And that's not going to be beneficial to you. You want to take that out of the cycle and reinvest that when the stock is back at its lowest, mm. like a normal strategy would dictate. I don't know why that's even legal and why no one has even stepped into it, but I'm pretty sure it's something they lobbied for uh, early on. So like, don't like invest in drip, have complete control of your money. Don't let a brokerage tell you how to use your money. You're smarter than mm -hmm. them. Um, and then like, so the, my strategy for this is if I'm pulling up, uh, if I'm pulling, if you're pulling into this, and once again, I'm not going to ever tell you like what stocks to buy. That's not something that I like, I feel comfortable telling someone what to do. I always say, but like every since you know every company has that so right now i have 110 shares of amc and in a month i'm looking at getting uh if the last pay i was for 50 dollars was 60 16 dollars i'm looking to get now with 110 somewhere double that and a little bit over so take time it, it's it's a strategy that pays off but I will put a link in the in the in the Discord. His name is Andre uh, Chank, and he's the person I based this strategy off of. When I first learned how to deal with stocks, he explained it, and he had a great video. Um, just he he has an account over two hundred and twenty dollars, and he gets paid thirty three thousand dollars a month from dividend payout. What? Yes. So he's because he's not holding one for a long time. He's just buying at the right time with those. Right? He, and this is his method. This is it's. I'm I'm literally stealing his strategy. He I I I got into his Discord. He asked. He asked someone. He had an AMA. I was the lucky winner, and I said disclose your strategy. And he gave me that option, and he disclosed it to it. And I literally screenshot it. But he ended up making a YouTube video about it anyway. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, he was like, hey, no recording. I was like, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> but, but 
like his strategy is what it tells me. And when I look at his charts, he is in the red daily. And this is something that mentally is kind of traumatic because you want to be in the green. But when you see like him down uh, 33%, but then you look at the dividend, like the dividend yield doesn't add to your annual yield of that stock. But when adjusted for it on his Excel spreadsheet, he's up 100 plus, 100, 113 plus on all of his stocks. Wow. So how long is he okay. holding his? So you said you're holding yours. What's so his name? I'm going to okay. put his video on the link in the this, in this chat real quick. And then uh, his name is Andre Jack. He's from a, he's from a weird country like that. <laughs> but uh he he makes a, he makes a lot of videos he talks about like the stock market he puts a video out every friday i i just enjoy watching him because i I'm, i stole his method off him but he's one of the best at it and he only and he strictly uses robin hood so how long does he hold it so he holds it for a month versus your week but no but and this is something that i actually and since he's so deeply vested and he has, he's, imagine what he had to get the stock price at to be, um, you know, at so low, you feel me? So for him, he taught, he, he desperately talks about like not falling into that trope of, okay, the stock price is about to pay out its dividends. Let's sell. No, he holds on to it. And he just, uh, he's developed a back catalog that I find to be like amazing, but like someone like me who has a smaller account that, you know, that one hundred and sixty three dollars can be put towards uh, a spread, uh, a debit spread. I'm, I need that money. So so I take my money out. But he prefers to keep it in. And and that sustains his stocks for him. But he gets paid his thirty three thousand. So he doesn't care. He just he literally used he's, he collected dividend stocks, 15 percent of his dividend shares for like four years and bought a Lambo off of dividends and he showed how he did it. And I Wait, like him because- I'm confused. This is too much. What's up? Okay, what's the uh, question? Okay, so like when you're looking to buy the stock, you're you're not looking at the number of, I mean, how much the stock is. You're looking at the dividend? I'm looking at the dividends I, because the price is just an entry fee. Mm. Okay, and, so how and, many, and then how much do you buy in order for you to know- the number of dividends that you're so, going to... And, and for that, you need to take a snapshot of it. Once again, you take that AMC price, right? $3.95. That's the current price of that stock. Right. You have to divide it by the dividend yield. And I think it came out to 0.19. Right. So basically, they will be paying you and then you can times that by 100 to figure out your percentage of it. Or, like or a, you mean 100 or how many shares you want to buy? Of, the, of how many shares about it. So that basically is telling you how many shares you have to buy. So you need, you need to be vested, not so much shares, but the um, prices, because like nine, you can't buy 19.5 shares, but that's how much money you need to invest to get, the, to get that total for a year. Okay. okay. Wait, so you said when I take the stock price divided mm -hmm. by dividend yield, yeah, it gives me the number I'll get if I held one share for one, a year. For that year, that's how much you would need. That's how much you would need to hold that. I mean, to make that money. So that point nine eight, or let's say, what's the dividend here? Is sixteen point seven. Sixteen point seven. You would need to be holding point one nine five. That's how much you have to have invested in this stock to make that sixteen. Pi, um, as amount of shares. So that's the amount. I, of no, I think it's. I think it's definitely dollar amount. Okay, for the year, so, it's dollar for amount because you're dividing money by money. So if I put, so if I take three point nine divided by like one point one nine five, as like uh, twenty four cents. Exactly. So but if I buy one share of AMC, I'll get twenty four cents for the year. Not for the year. For the year, you'll gain every year forever much they pay your dividend yield because this is dividend yield. 16. So that you'll get 16 for the year. Owning one share of that will give you $16 over the year. Okay. And this is a snapshot, and that's why I like it so much. Because and remind and let's be reminded, this is a rarity because AMC is a gutter trash stock right now. So they're desperate to keep people holding on it. If you can scroll down, it'll show you how many people are holding this stock. It's look at how many people are holding on to this stock. They're not holding on to this stock because they it's a good investment. It's because they know the dividend yield has gone up. So it's just beneficial for them. 
And the fact that Robinhood would tell you not to buy this is them playing favoritism towards AMC because mm. AMC is going to lose money hand over fist for every person that has this stock because it's an it's a vested interest. And trust and believe, even if they file for bankruptcy, they got to pay those investors first. That's that's front line. There's no questions that, about it. They did that like twice already this week. They've done that twice. Yeah. Two of my dividends that have been paid to me, they tried to... Oh, we're gonna. Can we give you more shares? I'm like, no, nah, pay my money. I know, I know y'all got. I know y'all got money. Y'all have all those movies. Give me my money. So, like, that's like a future way of looking to it. But um, that's pretty much like the crash. Unless somebody has like questions that I can answer like specifically towards it. But like, I'll I'll make like a chart and show like everything that I do step for step because a lot of my following on this because like TD Ameritrade and Robinhood. They're now the updates have made it so much easier where you can follow your dividend pay like the last time you're paid dividends and you can just backtrack it now. I just do it on the app. And since a lot of them are set for me, I don't go back to my chart, but the chart was very useful to me in the beginning. He has over a hundred stocks. Like I'm looking at his list now. It's kind of crazy that he does this. But he he sets it and forgets it. And he and and in my mind, my man just makes YouTube videos. He's living my life. It's crazy. Okay, so how do you lock how do you lock the dividend price? Like how do you lock it in? Like you just have to own the dividend. You just have to own the stock before the end of close on lock-in day. So let's say if the lock-in day was for mm -hmm. tomorrow, you just have to buy that stock before the end of market, the next the of be before the end of Monday's market. And then if I sell on Tuesday, do I still keep the dividends? If you have and once you have the lock-in day. You can give you can give you can sell the stock away at that point because at that point you've already held on to it. But you but most people don't sell it because the stock price will start to rise as people have either missed it or they're trying to build the market up so that the dividend payout is higher. So people will be hyping that market. OK, I'm, I'm a little confused. So if the price of a stock goes up, the price of the, the dividend you're getting goes up too. remember it's that snapshot. So based on when people got in. Mm, okay so like yeah if if you're if the day of the dividend you can like on that uh for amc remember that four that four dollar spike that was before the market closed so what? like i was so like at that point my my share went up if even though i got it at two dollars and 98 cents it's now at three dollars and 98 cents so when i took that picture it's gonna give me that new dividend yield for that day mm. and that's what it's gonna be locked in at Got it. What Just about the, the next next ex-dividend? Dividend. Come again? Oh, you go ahead, Rebecca. Um, so the ex-dividend date, you actually have to buy a day before that. So ex-dividend day is basically the day before recording day. Mm -hmm. So as long as you buy before that day, you are set in to get a dividend. Yeah. But um, as Hero was saying, a lot of people actually, you know, see that date and they think about buying in on that date. That's why there's always a kind of like a spike yeah. in stock price because everybody's everybody's driving the volume up now because yeah. everybody's trying to get in on the dividend so def i think the audio went out Rebecca, you just went mute you lost your audio rebecca she's not mute we just she just lost her audio yeah i think your audio went out rebecca oh uh, shoot somebody was calling okay. me oh okay there you go yep. Yep. Did you guys hear where where did it cut off? At you right after you said my name, you you dropped out. Oh, that's why I said so. Basically, the the people on the volume comes in. People are trying to buy in to get in on the dividend, and it spikes. But mm -hmm. that's why it's smart that Hero said you know he gets in, he thinks about it, and anticipates it a week before. Mm. So it's an at yeah. a lower price. I, I don't. You have to like yeah, yeah, Rebecca makes a great point. I I really make money off of dumb people. <laughs> on the stock market that is it, because people are so emotional and like one of my golden rules is if you plan ahead you don't have to worry like at, at bare minimum i know i'm smarter than half of the market so i'm always going to be in the green from that standpoint the downfall is is when i see a stock with a high dividend yield and i jump in and i'm like damn did i just jump in at the wrong time like andre checks when i it's the chart that i'm looking at right now for him in his discord he jumped in on a uh, he jumped in on GE that had a horrible year this year, but he got in at the 
at the peak of the pandemic when GE was down to like six dollars, I believe, all the way up from twenty the year before. It, he so like he's sitting on GE right now. No one, I don't know what you guys have in market, but I doubt GE is on your market right now. So these are the stocks that he goes looking for. He doesn't buy attractive stocks. He doesn't buy uh, stocks that get talked about. He, uh, the, be- the, the best in- industries for this is energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, energy, as much as I downplay, uh, the military, uh, Raytheon and things like that. These are, the, these are his companies of choice because these are like blue chip, old school, not going anywhere, uh, at least for the foreseeable future. So like even as in today is Tesla's literally making me my my daily amount uh my goal is to have the ability to say that every day in some fr- frame of fashion i have enough stocks whether it's fractional or not don't be deceived too that you have to buy a full share a, a fractional share will get you a fractional dividends mm. and that's something that i didn't know um when i i was like man i want this great dividend yield but then in that situation i was like oh I can do a fractional share and sure enough, I got a fractional dividend share, but he owns over 200 shares and they're the most, and, and on Robin hood right there, but on uh, the other TD Ameritrade, he has over 400 different stocks. And that's because uh, what's the word I'm looking for. There's a lot of stocks that don't show up on, um, uh, Robin, on Robin hood. So like, yeah, what's go. If you can go to the f- one year on a uh, GE one year chart, in right there at the drop of the pandemic. So it went from 13 to yeah, to six dollars. And that's when he got in with GE and he's held it ever since. And they've paid out four times. And every time they've paid out is one of those spikes that you're looking at. Like for for any just I love like the way dividends are so unknown and they motivate the market so much from underneath. I did not realize like dividends actually move the market that much. Dividends moves the market. And and this is where it becomes so great because my, now the next, the next step in his model is how is dividend based options and which I'll talk about in another time. But basically imagine knowing that the investors, uh, like the investors have already calculated how much they plan to lose after paying dividends. If the dividends, if the stock stays at $10 and the dividend payout causes it to drop to, $7. The stock stays at 10. The moment dividend payout happens, you know, everyone and their mother's going to be selling. So you can have two opportunities to make money with a put at seven, a put at a strike price at $7 with a call to follow right away at a strike price of $8, knowing it's going to 10. You pay the extra premium but it's worth this weight in gold because you know before the next dividend day. So my stock, uh, my uh, my long call days, my long call option days are now based on dividend payout. They're not based on, oh, okay, I'm going to just give it two weeks to see what happens. No, I look for the next dividend payout and that's when I make my option call for these under $10 stocks because $200 up, man, by week three, I'll be making $600 off of this. And that stock money, I'll just turn around and put it back into the dividends and multiply the annual yield for myself. I'm literally just forcing them to pay me money that they're paying me. And every time the money goes back through, it multiplies. So like on a small scale, $60 sounds minute, but $60 happening seven times in a month, you're paying, you could pay off a car note at that point. If you got good credit, man, you know, <laughs> it'd be tough out here. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a smart strategy for real. Uh, but, but next, but for the podcast, I'll have a formal chart with actual numbers par for it. And I'll stop rambling so I can find this video and let the professional tell you how to do it. But it's it's my method. Like I said, $15.34, I, I scalp and I pay dividends. So I've had two major, I had two major, uh, full disclosure, I had two major, um, uh, stock uh, options that made me over four hundred dollars. Both uh, one was four hundred, another one was six hundred, and that one I took away and put into the other one. But this current one that I have now, uh, plus the three hundred and the seven hundred that I've accumulated this year off of uh, Tesla, between Tesla and dividends, I made my account go from one thousand dollars to one thousand seven hundred dollars in the span of the pandemic. 
basically doubled your money since that's March. awesome so like and and i don't i don't discount people who swing trade i think people are a lot better like Taufik is 10 times better at me than like swing trades and figuring out options entry prices but like it's literally the safest way to accumulate money and it's and the and the little key is in the market it's there on robin hood and if you're just looking at it from a dividends perspective the market looks totally different when people see the market dropping i just smile because i know there's a bunch of people who are buying the stock and only and increasing my dividend yields and i'm not even doing anything all i gotta do is sit there and bear the wave um one of the greatest holds for me was uh was lows when lows dropped to a hundred dollars a hundred and fifty dollars i started to cry but then I just I just saw it go up to 170, and that was like my year annual. I got everything I wanted from there in one year. So, man, I'm about to put like 10 percent of my account just so this dividend. It's it's, it's it stands it stands to reason. It's it's a part of your mind that you don't have to worry about. Right. You just close your mind off. You you see it go red. You don't pay attention to it because you know every X. X, Y, Z, you're going to get money off of it. And when you see the money, when you see it in deep red, just buy that dip. You're not buying it for the stock price. You're buying it for the dividends. Facts. Facts. But yeah, uh, I appreciate cool. you guys. Good question. Yeah, um, so I've been actually using the same um, kind of method, but with the special dividend. So most recently, Costco announced their $10 special dividend. Did you so see that? Costco's yeah. went ham with that. I was so amped about that. And this is another thing that they don't tell you about. If they have a super good day, like uh, if on in a regular year where the market is doing well, they'll they'll pay out to their investors randomly. They will pay you out randomly. I got two random payouts from. I got one random payout from. Uh, I believe it was a PVR, which is on. It's a different. It's an energy company. And then I got another one from a pharmaceutical company that did really well. They make insulin. And once they changed the law and it was uh, in Toronto. So like they'll pay you out randomly. You'll just get a dividend out of, out of the blue. It won't be a, it's, it's called an unscheduled dividends payout, but it's just, it's just random loyalty. They call it a loyalty check. <laughs> they, that's what I say. And I'm like, yeah, send it. To is it like you, it has to be a dividend stock and you have to hold it for a certain period or how does that one work? No, it's just, if you have it at the time, they do the random payout. What? So they have two. They have one that's based on time accumulated. So that's why Andre says never sell the stock because it's based on time accumulated. Then the second one is just a loyalty check. If you have it, when they give it, it's yours. That's awesome. I did not know about that. It's, it, the, the dividend market is amazing. And I'm just, and I'm so happy. Like I'm still learning a lot about it. Uh, like literally only six months in. And if I put the amount of effort I put into like cutting people open, I think I'd be like a boss at it by now. <laughs> hey, that is that is dope. So I guess the biggest ones to watch out for are like stable um, energy, yield pharmaceutical, from- like things that you know. Even if the world went into a pandemic, it won't stop. Energy, pharmaceutical, uh, a lot of gas companies, a lot of military con- Raytheon. Uh, uh, Bellwether, Boeing, Boeing. When Boeing, the the ones that like are always re- top recommended. Like I think the top three I've seen are SPG. O- but the thing about those is like the only reason why I'm always a little nervous about those is because their prices change so much mm. that like when is the best time to get in? Like unless, unless you're just not afraid to just say buy and just accumulate over time. If you're okay with that method, if if you're okay with seeing your mark your your charts in the red daily, then go for it. But there are these ten dollars, you know, fifteen dollars stocks that pay out two dollars over the year. That's a be- that's a that's a catch because that price can increase. Uh, I think you can't go wrong with at least having four stocks dedicated strictly to dividends because mm-hmm. if you learn that market over the course of three months, you can then start making option calls on it. And if the price is so low that the max price for two years out contract is. $150. I'd rather spend $150 on this $15 stock that's going to push 600 versus trying to accumulate $600 to make a thousand off of Tesla. God forbid. Yeah, you, you just changed the whole game, man. <laughs> I actually just um I started putting a list together of dividend stocks as I was I had some extra money and that's what I was thinking putting it into. So, I can I'll put that on the Discord and y'all can hey. check it out. But it includes like really great stocks like, you know, J&J, um Duke 
Abby V has been a great one that I've been Abby watching. V, yeah. Um, I've been watching. I saw it at the dip at sixty, and I I didn't buy in, and now it's at like over a hundred dollars. hundred dollars. So yeah. One Man, that I can do that, but it, it's dip. still it's yeah. still it's still a great investment. So I'll I'll, I'll put that on the uh, Discord. All right, excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. But yeah, appreciate you guys. I have another quick question. What's up? So again, so you're talking about the price moves. I I, I don't think I, I you might have said it, but I didn't really understand it. So. Say today the price of AMC is three dollars, it goes up to four dollars. Mm -hmm. Between that tier, we go from three to four. The ex dividend date is that's when you okay, you gotta hold it pretty much, get your dividend. If the price goes up, maybe between that time, does that affect the amount of dividends you get the next time around? Like, will the dividend yield change? So, every time the, the dividend, up, every time that lock in happens. It's that snapshot is the is it's going to be for that. And then if the very next day, whatever the picture is, it is building towards the next one. It's just mm. at the day of the lock in. So no matter what's happening throughout the day, it's the moment it locks in. If at 5 p.m. their stuff locks in, it is at that snapshot that that, that they take to no, determine I mean, what the dividend is. I mean, like when when like the dividend prices say that was sixteen zero seven. Okay. Will it change to like seventeen next next time around? No, no, it's or it's constant. Go ahead. I believe the yields can they? It's up to the company, so it it's can up to the company. Them. Okay. So okay. yeah, companies dictate the price. Like they can say that, but like just because they had a great year doesn't mean that they'll increase their price next the next time around. Or even if they say, for example, like it, you can tell this based on the company because look at AMC. There's no way in hell AMC should be paying you money to hold this stock at this point. They, if they were smart, they would have come out and been like, hey, okay, everybody, you know, we're not paying out dividends, but then everyone would do what? Sell. And then their stock would fall out of the, fall off the face of the earth. So you're saying they're giving money because they're desperate or are you saying because they believe in it? Yeah. Company? AMC is desperate and I'm taking okay. advantage of their desperation. Got it. Okay. So you, For you example, don't that they have like potential because last week I saw um they got a hundred million dollars from some capital group. Yeah, that's that's hype news. That don't mean nothing. Okay. Else. okay. Yeah, I mean like when Disney when the pandemic happened, Disney have a great dividend, but they completely said we're stopping our dividends because of the pandemic yeah. and all the closures. So you but, know it could yeah. go. Yeah. You so, and Disney and and like would you and and if you ask me, do I bet against uh, bet against the mounts? Hell no. Black Widow ain't dead. She's coming back. So right. I'm going to watch their movies. I know they're coming. She's coming back. So Tony Stark is not dead. He's coming back. And I was like, okay, you don't have to that pay me. You just dropped a spoiler. I think you need to be better at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I do got an inside man. My bad. My bad. My bad. They you actually gotta, just, you can't just drop a spoiler like that. You got yeah, my bad. My bad. It was just Disney oh, investor. Oh so they just they just dropped all their uh, they just dropped all their releases. That's why that's why up so much within past couple days because the uh, Disney investors they that oh I, yeah they let out they they're gonna let out 23 movies 23 movies and TV shows in, and included yeah. in that list is Black Panther too so like people are people have faith in the mouse he owns everything 150 to 180 basically that is crazy. Yep. literally just on that Thursday when they had the investors day and dropped all those announcements Wow. I did see the headline, but I never looked at the stock because of it. I, I thought it was going to be like some stupid like Apple thing, like where it doesn't really no, They so did much. everything. Oh, wow, was I wrong? They let it all out. Hey, another thing we learned, don't bet against the mouse. Don't bet, it. Don't yeah, bet my, against the mouse. My Instagram feed was just like everything was just Marvel. Marvel everything. I was like, okay, I definitely missed out on something today. <laughs> well, that's funny. Man, okay, man, I appreciate both of y'all like providing your, your keys and like insights on dividends. This, this made a lot more sense to me. I, I need to definitely, um, and I'll probably create like we can all like work together, create like that schedule and maybe create a shared Excel spreadsheet or something. Oh, uh, definitely. Once I get mine up and going, I'll, I'll put it on there. But I just found the dude's YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna share the video and the channel with you guys. He puts out a video every Friday. The, it's, it's, he's literally, he's literally giving out the keys. Once he's made his money, he said, I don't care, I'll give it out. So I'll put this in here for you guys. This is his channel. Um, on the Discord, can we maybe like under the stocks channels, can we put like a dividend channel too? Because I think that would be a good thing. Just having to having discussions under under stocks with dividends. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm about to put it that right now. Uh, and I'll also put this link in the YouTube chat. Dope. Dope. Uh, not the YouTube, sorry, the Discord. Got it. Um, but does that include, conclude anything, everything, the dividends? I want to make sure we have time to do weekly and we can head at least. Hey, I'm good. Unless anybody has any questions, they can hit me up directly on the Discord or uh, just throw it in here now. It's, but yeah. Any last question about dividends? I'm going to take that Oh, oh, yeah.